Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial brought to you by Louis Art. My name is Emmanuel Lukafo and today we shall be creating a basketball inside Blender. By the end of this tutorial, we will be ending up with a re result similar to this. So it's, it has gotten the overall base shape of a basketball and if you go into edit mode, we also got nice, nice edge loops flowing through it. So to start off, we will just add a round cube or if you want to create this by yourself you can just add a cube and either use modifier or you go into the edit mode and press W for the spatial spatial menu and just subdivide smooth it a bit and you you have that so I will just add the subdivision surface and set it to two levels and apply it next I want to smooth out the shading and so we're good to go so the next step we want to create is th this nice curve which you get in the basketball so to do that we will be using boolean to create that shape so let's add a cylinder and make sure the cup cup fill type is set to nothing okay then you want to go to your top view and just align the cylinder to fit the reference um, that the reference of the curve that's going to um, bisect this um, geometry okay so once you're happy with the position you want to mirror it to the other side so you're getting like very accurate distance between the two and the mirror object is going to be this once you're done you just apply that and apply all the rotation and scale and also make sure you center all the origins so for the next step you want to select this the um, subdivided cube and add a boolean so you want to set the object to this cylinder and for the operation you want to set it to different so you should end up with an effect that looks like this and next you just duplicate this sphere and switch it to intercept and you end up with something that looks like this and you, you just need to just apply those two modifiers which we created and now you can delete the cylinder or move it to another layer so let's just apply the rotation and scale so we've ended up with this nice looking model to get nice um edge loops there's no magic way to do that. You need to retopologize. So that's what we're going to do. But don't worry, it's not going to be tedious. I'm just going to show you the... I'm going to give you the way to do it very fast. So let's just add a plane. And just to get a single vertex out of that. Just delete the rest. So we'll, we end up with just one vertex. And next, we're going to enable snapping. But before that, let's set the face snap element, the snap element to face, and then turn it on. So if we move the vertex, it's just now directly onto the object, as you can see. So it's going to be tedious, like retopologizing the whole object without the mirror modifier. So we'll just add that and set the mirror object to this rounded cube, which I will for the rest of the tutorial called underlining mesh. Inside the edit mode, it will, look, it will look like nothing is happening. That's because you need to check on this preview um, icon here. And once you do that, you can see the both um, vertices. The next step is to enable both the Y and the Z axis. So you have both X, Y, and Z checked. So this is going to speed up the workflow because we'll just work on a very little portion of the mesh because of this new option we checked. So next, we just start up the retopology. The retopology. So let's start up. So if you're not, if you have never done retopology, at least this will be a good introduction to it to you. This will be a good introduction to retopology for you. But anyway, so you just go in and just create new mesh out of an underlining mesh so you you have the power to control how the edge flow will look and how everything is going to turn out so let's turn 
I usually add the shrink wrap so that it helps me in most places. It, it will help, it's like speeds up the whole workflow more. So I want to set, I want to make it preview in the edit mode too and also keep it above the surface. And I will offset it to like to with 0 0.04. I think that's too much. Uh, let's... Okay, um, so let's just that. Move this a bit. Okay. I don't know what's happening with the mirror modifier. It's acting wonky. So we need to combine these two objects. We need to combine this as a one object so that we can just um, use it as a reference object for the shrink wrap. So let's add the shrink wrap once more and set it to the cube, keep a both surface, then the offset 0 0.03. Let's reduce that more. So an advantage of this is that you can just draw on it and it just follows the geometry easily. Before I continue, I want to set different colors so we can be able to, we can be able to identify the two geometry from each other. So just add green and turn off the specularity. Cool. So um, let's save it so in case it crashes. We just start afresh. Cool. So what we are going to do now is just outline the edge loops we want to keep and then we can go from there. So it's going to be easy because we will not have to work on the whole geometry. So we can just duplicate certain aspect and just extrude it. Cool. Um, So you just make sure you try to maintain the edge loops and you'll be looking at your reference to find out where those cuts are. So I have a second monitor where I do that. Like there's no magic to get nice um, Edge flow, except just either retopologizing or using a very good program. Uh, but don't worry, this is not going to take your time mm -hmm. because it's like you're just working working on one fourth of the whole model. very fast you can just create this I don't need that edge loop just delete it uh, so once you get the edge loop in place um, then you can just fill out the rest but the most important thing is getting the edge loop and also try to avoid some triangles if you can Um, but avoiding triangles in objects um, that don't need much deformation is you can neglect it a bit except if the triangle will like also affect the geometry like when you add subdivision then you want to avoid that but in a situation where it would not then you can just be a bit liberal with the whole triangle stuff and the end guns but avoid it when you can yeah. Um, made a mistake here. So I'll just delete this face. 
think we need more ad loop. So I'm trying to go as fast as I can. I can I could have sp sped up the video, but I don't want to do that. You can just skip to the end, but if you want to learn, pick up a few tricks, you can just stick around. So at first, if, when you start with topology, it doesn't seem fun, but when you find out that it's like necessary, it's, an, it's a necessary evil to like create good mesh, then it becomes fun, like false puzzles, because then you can actually control the edge loops of everything. And for this case, it's like easy because you just need to worry about just one fourth of your whole mesh. So you can do this less than 15 minutes. You can be done with it. Just put up, put on the nice music and just keep working. So the reason I'm a bit liberal with my movement is because I know it will always stick to the mesh because of I have shrink wrap um, turned on. So that's one tip. Shrink wrap helps. Though when you start retopologizing complex geometry, especially hard surface, it may be some, a bit restrictive. So you, it's just there sometimes when you need it. Other time, there are other methods which you can use. Uh, I think we'll run into some problem. So let's handle that. Just create room for adding more edge loop. Okay, so we're already done with it. Voila. So we can hide the other object. And a good once you have shrink wrap turned on, a good workflow is to always relax your mesh. Um, then you can just go in and just push it to place. Cool. So this is what we have ended, we have, we have ended up with. So for this next part, you just clean up everything. So I'm just going to scale this axis on the X. Um, so let me repeat what I did again. Just like getting the scale manipulator and just push the X till zero. Then I'll go to the side view and do that for the Y. Just push it, um, scale it Y zero. And yep. So that's that. And also, I want to get the reference of where this is. So it's around here. So I want to create an edge. I want to create a vertex group so that later I can easily call on that. I can easily get back this edge group. So I can just do select. Uh -uh and <laughs> I don't need you so I'll just remove so later I can just do select oh boy. okay this one select cool so I can just easily select it later when I need it and so we are mostly done with everything so I'll just move the underlying image to another layer and delete this Pencil. So for the next step, we need to apply everything. So you can just press Alt C, mesh from curve. So you have your mesh. So let's delete unwanted stuff. So I don't want this edge loop because it was added here because of the symmetry and also this one. I want to push it in a bit. Cool. So let's select all the edge loops. So 
So we'll just select the edge loop, including this one. Okay. And just hit insert. I'll move it down a bit. Then insert again and extrude it out a bit. Assign, remove. Cool. So this is what we've gotten. Just mold it out. And voila, you've gotten your basketball. So you can add subdivision. And finally, let's add edge loops to preserve the shape. So don't worry to not affect the overall shape, it will just tighten up some loose ends. And yep. So that's basically it. So I was a bit fast with this, so you can spend time on yours and get it to look better. But this is basically it. Um, for the color, we can just create two colors. For this one, give it an orange, something like this. Then this one with dark. So let's get select these edge loops and assign. Oh, so that's basically it, guys. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys picked up a few things. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. If you wish to see more from me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you can be notified anytime, anytime I post something new because I do post like regularly. So bye-bye for now. See you next time.